The primary key is a field you designate that uniquely identifies a record. So, whenever you create a table, make sure you've got one field that's going to contain unique values only and no duplicates. As you can see here in my computers table, I've got the asset tag field or the barcode field that has the data type auto number assigned to it. As you can tell where it says new, that when I enter in a new record, well I don't type over new because it's automatically going to generate a new number for me sequentially. So it goes from 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on. So there's no duplicates in that field making it unique. But can you imagine if I went ahead and got rid of the asset tag field and I just had the manufacturer and all the others that if I had a bunch more records that, well, were from the same manufacturer, same date received, purchase price and warranty, that if you came into this database and you saw all those duplicates, you might be tempted to go, oh, let me go ahead and clean this up and delete the duplicates and that would be a boo-boo, a big fat no, because you'd be deleting my inventory. So to take care of that, we've got one field that's going to have no duplicates that uniquely identifies each computer so you can see that, well, we don't have duplicates, we actually have this many computers. Now I know that the auto number is not a barcode, so I want to convert this into a simple number field where I can actually enter in the barcode that comes off of the computer into this field. And I wanted to leave the auto number up there so you can see what it looks like when you use the data type feature, how it automatically generates a number for each record for you, but let's get rid of it. So to do that, this is probably going to be the last video that I'm going to go over the different ways to change views. Like for the tab, you can right click on it to go to the design view, or you can come up here on the home tab to the views group and either click on the drop down arrow to switch and go to the other view, design, or let me click off. The opposite view is going to be up here that you're in, and typically if it's data sheet view, it's design and design data sheet view in most of the objects. So let's go ahead and click on design, and you can see there's the asset tag. And then we've got the data type, auto number, automatically generates a number for each record that we add. And then over here in the row header for that field, you got this cute little key. Oh, isn't that nice? Well, that's the primary key that's been assigned to it. As you recall in an earlier training video, when you create a new table, Access automatically creates the first field for you. Well, let's do a review. Come up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Tables group, click on Table, and there's the generic table name until you save it, and there's the first field automatically created for you, defaulted with the generic name ID, and then the auto number data type assigned to it. Well, it's the only data type that in this view shows you new. So when you add in additional fields and you type in the data there and you save the record, it'll automatically convert this to, well, being the first record, one, and then sequentially two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And so if you had another table like for employees and you don't want a generic number for each employee, like, hey, you're number one, you're number two, you can go ahead and convert this or tweak it and rename it and call it like SS for social security number. And then, of course, go ahead and go to the design view and change it from auto number because you don't want an automatically generated social security number. You want to be able to type in that number. In any case, let's go ahead and close out. And, and that's what we did here is we tweaked it. Well, almost. We got to change it from automatically generating a number, click in it, click on the drop down arrow, to just a number that we can type in. Now, how big is that number? Or how small? In other words, we want our database to be as efficient as possible when we pull up data, especially if we have hundreds of thousands of records, it could slow it down a bit. And so what I mean by that is the field size. Are we entering in just a few numbers or large numbers into this field? Well, it's just a few numbers. So with the data type here, if we come down below into the field properties, into the field size, the default for the number data type is long integer. And you can come over here and read a synopsis about it and recommendations, but I want to stop us right here before you start reading it. You can go ahead and read it, but I want you to know that access is a process when it comes to creating a database, and I can go off on a lot of tangents. So instead, let's go ahead and start with our building blocks, one video at a time, and then I'll introduce you to these other things like relationships in a later training video. That way, once we got the basics, we can start putting it together a lot easier than going off on tangents. So, access is a process. Watch the videos. At least, hopefully, you'll watch all the videos throughout the entire course so you got a great foundation because there are things that I'm not covering here that will be addressed and a lot easier later on. So, having said that, let's go ahead and continue and be patient. Just keep watching the videos.
we've got the field size, which is long integer. You can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and go, hmm, well, I bet if it's not long, integer must mean that it's a lot shorter. If you're like, I don't know what this means, just go ahead and make sure that the cursor is flashing that field that you want more information about, like for the field size, and then hit the F1 key on the keyboard. Goes to Microsoft.com. Go ahead and scroll down and over. And there's the integer, stores numbers in the tens of thousands, as opposed to long integer, which is, hooey, that's a lot. And you can see over here the storage size, just to have that field, is 2 bytes, as opposed to 4 bytes. And so you want to make it as efficient as possible. If any one of the records throughout the hundreds of thousands for that field is going to be, well, anything larger than the tens of thousands, then you have to choose long integer for that field. Let's go ahead and close out and come down here and we can click and change it to let's just do integer now the primary key by default was assigned to the first field we just renamed it and changed the data type so it could fit our situation we want to keep track of not an auto number just any number but an actual asset tag or barcode but if that's not the field that you want the primary key assigned to maybe it's another field down below well i know it wouldn't make sense to put it for the purchase price because we're buying pretty much the same computer. It's all going to have the same price. But as far as assigning it goes, well, come up here, go to the Related Contextual Design tab, go to the Tools group, and there it is, Primary Key. And you can see when I click in the field here that has it assigned, that it's also highlighted there. So when I go to another field and I want to flip it, click on Primary Key, and it reassigns it from the Asset tag to the Purchase Price. But I don't want it to the Purchase Price. I want it to the Asset tag. Let's go ahead and click there and select primary key. And now we're back to where we started. Now the primary key isn't just something that says, hey, there should be no duplicates in this field. It's also a cop, a police officer. It will enforce this. So with it assigned to the asset tag, if you try to type in a duplicate number, you'll get busted. Not only that, but it won't allow any empty values either. Want to take it for a drive? Okie dokie. Let's come up here switch views. You can go ahead and save it, but if you forget to save it and you switch the view by clicking on data sheet, it'll prompt you to save it. Click yes, and here we go. Okay, so we don't have new down below in the new record, so we know it's not auto number anymore, in which case we have to go ahead and type in our own barcode. So to keep it simple, instead of typing in a bunch of long numbers, let's just go ahead and type in a number here, hit the tab key, and we'll do micron, hit the tab key, Control colon to put in today's date. Tab, let's do a thousand, tap, or a hundred. Let's go ahead and hit the space bar and do warranty there. And you can see it's in write mode, so we haven't saved it yet. But notice that, well, in the asset tag column where I assigned it the primary key, it said there could be no duplicates. Well, if I save it right now, I'm going to get busted. Hold down the shift key and hit enter. And it says, oh, the changes you request to the table were not successful because they'd create duplicate values in the index primary key or relationship. Change the data in the field or fields that contain duplicate data, remove the index, or redefine the index to permit duplicate entries, and try again. Okay, I got busted. Let's click okie dokie. And so instead, the other thing that the primary key does, besides not allowing duplicates, is no blanks. So if I go ahead and click off to save it, it says, what are you doing? you got to have something in this field. Okay, busted again. So let's go ahead and type in something that's not already in that field. And then hold down the shift key, hit enter. Ah, finally accepted. Now there are two more keys I want to introduce you to. I don't want to go over them in great detail. We'll cover those a bit later on. But as access or building a database is a process, I want to introduce it to you so you can start thinking about it or familiarizing yourself with it. And to do that, let's go ahead and change views. Right click, go back to design. And the first key that we went over was the primary key, which was assigned to one field. The next one is called a composite key, which is two or more fields assigned a primary key within the table. And to oversimplify, let's say we have an employee's table where we just have the employee's first name and last name. Well, you may have some employees that have the same first name and some that have the same last name. Typically, I would say, you don't have employees that have both the same first name and last name. And so what you do is you go ahead and say, okay, collectively between the two fields, the first name and last name, there can be no duplicates. And that would be a composite key. So to assign two or more fields 
the primary key, which once you assign it, if it's two or more, it converts it into a composite key, or it's known as a composite key. It doesn't say, hey, I'm now composite. It just has this key here duplicated two or more times. Just go ahead and click on the row header for one and go down or up to select the others. Or if it's nonlinear, then hold down the control key and click on the row header for another. And I've got a total of three highlighted, or the row headers are highlighted, one, two, and three. And then come up here on the design tab in the tools group and click on primary key. And now we have, well, this might get a little bit confusing here, but between those three fields, we can't have any one of them be duplicated. So I can have duplicate manufacturers, duplicate date received, duplicates in the warranty field. But between all three, I can't have more than one record that has the same manufacturer, the same date received, and the same warranty. Collectively, that is. I can have one record that has the manufacturer atlas, the date received January 1st, the warranty yes, but I can't have a second record that has that matched. It can have the same manufacturer, the same date received, or the same manufacturer and the date received, but it can't have the same manufacturer, date received, and warranty, or the various combinations that you can see where you can have the same warranty and the date received, but the last one here, manufacturer, can't be the same, it's got to be different. So you can see how this can be a bit challenging, but to keep it simple, just think about that first name, last name. So if this was first name and last name, well, to go ahead and unassign the primary keys, let me click off. You can go ahead and click in any one of those and then just deselect the primary key and it removes it from all of them. You can just go ahead and, well, if that was first name and last name, you'd select primary key. And so they can have the same first name, you can have five Bobs, and you can have the same last name, five Smiths, but you can't have more than one Bob Smith collectively. Let's go ahead and remove that, come back up here, and select Asset Tag, and click there. And there we go, that just cleared out, had to refresh itself, because I was wondering why Warranty was in bold. In any case, I clicked in it and clicked out, and it removed the bold. And then finally, we got the Foreign Key. Now, the Foreign Key is the field you create in one table that will have the same data type value and relates to the primary key of another table. In other words, when you break your data down into the smallest, most meaningful parts, your tables, like I've got my computers here, then I'll have a table for employees. Well, each employee is going to have a computer, so how do I relate to them or link them up between the two? What you can do in this case, as one example, is I'd create a field over here in the computers table and call it the employee ID or type in employee ID and link the employee ID field here known as the foreign key because it's going to link up and relate to the primary key in the employee table the field the employee ID that the primary key would be assigned to or from the employees table I can do it the other way around I could have the asset tag listed at the bottom of the employees table that would be the foreign key because that would relate to the primary key or the barcode the asset tag in the computers table. And we'll go over this in more detail, but I actually want to introduce it to you because in the next training video when we learn how to create relationships, we need to make sure we can relate these tables with primary keys and foreign keys. So my recommendation is that each table ought to have a field that contains unique values, the primary key assigned to it, and also relate to other tables so we can find out, in this case, the computers that are assigned to each employee in the employee table have perhaps maybe the employee ID below here in the computers table that's going to link up again to the primary key assigned to the employee ID field in the employee table. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.